République du Congo a été proclamée et notre cher pays est maintenant entre les mains de ses propres enfants. Ensemble, mes frères, mes sœurs, nous allons commencer une nouvelle lutte, une lutte sublime qui va mener notre pays à la paix, à la prospérité et à la grandeur. Nous allons établir ensemble la justice sociale et assurer que chaque, chacun reçoive la juste rémunération de son travail. Nous avons connu les ironies, les insultes, les coups que nous devions subir le matin, midi et soir. Il oubliera qu'à un noir, on disait tu, non certes comme à un ami, mais parce qu'un est vous honorable était réservé pour seulement. Nous avons connu que notre fils polié, au nom des textes prétendument légaux, qui ne faisait que reconnaître les droits du plus fort. Nous avons connu que la loi n'était jamais la même, selon qu'il s'agissait d'un blanc ou d'un noir, accommodant pour les uns l'univers pour les autres. Nous avons connu les souffrances atroces des religieux pour opinion politique ou croyance religieuse. Exilés dans leur propre patrie, leur sort était vraiment pire que la mort à elle-même. Nous avons connu qu'il y avait dans les villes des maisons magnifiques pour les blancs et des paillotes pour les pour les noirs. Les noirs n'étaient admis dans les cinémas ni dans les restaurants ni dans les magasins européens. Les noirs voyageaient à même la côte de Péniche, au pied du plan de la la mine de luxe. Qui vous priera enfin des fusillades, vous périr tant de nos frères, des cachets au fil vite à les manger ce qui ne voulait plus se soumettre au régime d'injustice, d'oppression et d'exploitation. Cette indépendance du Congo, si elle est proclamée aujourd'hui dans l'attente avec la Belgique, pays ami avec qui nous traitons d'égal à égal, et les Congolais du de ce nom ne pourra jamais oublier ses mandats. Et c'est par la lutte qu'il a été conquis. de tous les jours, une élite ardente et idéaliste, une élite dans laquelle nous n'avons ménagé ni nos forces, ni nos privations, ni nos souffrances, ni notre sang. Cette élite fit de l'âme, des feux et des sangs. Nous en sommes fiers jusqu'au plus profond de nous-mêmes, car ce fut une élite noble et juste, une élite indispensable pour mettre fin à l'immédiat esclavage qui nous était imposé par la force. Ce qui fut notre sort à 80 ans du régime colonialiste, nos blessures sont trop fraîches et trop douloureuses encore pour que nous puissions les chasser de notre mémoire. Nous avons connu le travail harassant, exigé en échange de salaire, qui ne nous permettait ni de manger à notre faim, ni de nous vêtir, ni de manger décemment, ni de lever nos enfants comme des êtres chers. Yes, indeed, kings and queens. Yes, indeed, that was the voice of Baba Patrice Lumumba uh, speaking uh, at the, in the, the inauguration of the independence of the Congo in 1960, kings and queens. Worry not if you can't understand uh, the linguistics of what he was saying. We play that every year, kings and queens, just so you can feel the spirit uh, of uh, Baba uh, Patrice Lumumba. But you can Google and read uh, the whole uh, speech if you want, uh, kings and queens. We're going to give you a little bit of the, a taste of the translation. Um... 
uh, and he says, I salute you in the name of the Congolese government. I ask all of you, my friends, who tirelessly fought in our ranks to mark this, the 30th of June, 1960, as an illustrious date that will be ever engra- engra- engraved in your hearts. A date whose meaning you will proudly explain to your children so that they in turn might relate to their grandchildren and great grandchildren the glorious history of our struggle for freedom although this independence of congo is being proclaimed today by agreement with belgium an amicable country with which we are on equal terms no congolese will ever forget no congolese excuse me no congolese uh, will ever forget that independence was won in struggle, uh, in a struggle, a, per- a persevering and inspired struggle carried on from day to day. A struggle in which we were undaunted by privation or suffering and stinted neither strength nor blood it was filled with tears fire and blood we are deeply proud of our struggle because it was just a no- just and noble and indispensable in putting an end to the humiliating bondage uh, forced upon us he goes on to say kings and queens um uh uh he goes on to say the republic of congo has been proclaimed and our beloved country's future is now in the hands of its own people brothers let us commence together a new struggle a sublime struggle that will lead our country to peace prosperity and greatness together we shall establish social justice and ensure for every man a fair remuneration for his labor we shall show the world what the black man can do when working in liberty we shall make the congo the pride of africa we shall see to it that the lands of our native country truly benefit its children we would we shall revise all the old laws and make them into new ones that will be just and noble we shall stop the persecution of free thought we shall see to it that all citizens uh, enjoy the fullest extent the ba- to the fullest extent the basic freedoms provided by the declaration of human rights we shall it's, it, it eradicate discrimination and so on and so forth kings and queens he goes on and i'm going to end it there because we have on the line to delve into these matters further for our benefit brother makola of the Uhuru movement and the patrice lumumba coalition brother makola are you with us yes i'm indeed brother Shakra. yes greetings my brother thank you for being uh with us uh today um and yes it's it's, it's actually a very pertinent that you are with us brother Bacola, because as you may know uh our other topic today we're going to be looking at the legacy of um brother barack obama so effectively we are you know juxtaposing two distinct kinds of what some might call black leadership uh one uh patrice lumumba and one barack obama and so we've got you on to address the the, the, the <laughs> issue of uh baba patrice lumumba for those who may not be aware brother makola can you just br- give a, a a brief explanation as to why it's very important for us to remember uh honor and celebrate the life of baba patrice lumumba well Shaka, thank you thank you for having me um i'm speaking on the behalf of the huru movement we set up um, what we called We Are Lumumba Coalition um, in 2011 during the uprising when Africans um, in the Congo were rejecting the neo-colonial leadership we now have, um, um, Joseph, Joseph Kabila, uh, who's, who's the president now. So in terms of, really, um, your question, I want to answer that, but I also want to say something really important because I think some people may or may not know this, but um, every year... Um, you know, uh, our Kabbalah revivalist movement do their best to really make sure that, um, you know, African heroes uh, or, or martyrs, those who die for the struggle, such as Patricia Mumba, get a, you know, get a, f- a fair hearing and, and, and what have you. So every year, I'm, I'm not necessarily me, but sometimes Luizzi or others, you know, we, we get a chance to sort of talk to our people about Lumumba and about people like Lumumba. Um, so I want to just really just, um, you know, uh, hail you, you guys up for, for the work you're doing um, in the radio and also, obviously, in the community, in terms of really getting um, information out there and, 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 and organizing our community. And that's, that's really important because Patricia Lumumba did not die in vain. Yes, sir. Um, right. And that's something that, you know, uh, must resonate, um, must resonate to, to, to you know, to, to, to the community. He didn't die in vain because if you look at what's happening in the Congo now, you look what's happening in Africa now, the struggle that Lumumba died for was about making sure 
that our Africa, you know, is for us. And you, and you read his speech. It's not just me making it up. You read the speech that he gave in front of the world, the whole world. You know, it was broadcast to the whole of uh, uh, um, uh, the world in terms of the radio. And people heard what he had to say and what he stood for. You know, when you listen to the other leaders, other new colonial Uncle Tom leaders, you know, when you hear what they had to say, you think about someone like Nelson Mandela when he said, I lived under a black oppression, white oppression. When did he live under white, you know, under black oppression? I mean, what he was saying is, I'm prepared to make compromise. Where Patrice Lumumba is saying, this is what we will do. We'll build a new Congo. We'll build a free Congo in which Africans uh, are living in the Congo will benefit from the, from the labor, from the, from the wealth of the Congo. So that is really the, the, the legacy of, of, of our Patrice Lumumba is that he made it clear that our Congo is not for sale. And he died with that message that, you know, you, you know he made, he, he said, look, it is not, you know, we shouldn't sort of cry for Patricia Mumba in that, oh, you know, isn't it sad for him? Because he knew his fate and he made it clear that between being free and being a slave, it's no compromise. You can't be slave today and be free tomorrow and be slave today. It doesn't work like that. You're either a slave mm. or you're free. And, you know, and, and, and Marcus, Marcus, uh, Malcolm X, made the same, you know, said the same thing, you know, you either stand for something or you fall for, for anything. And he made it clear. And today you see people trying to live a schizophrenic life. Well, one minute, you know, on Monday, they're, they're, they're yes sir, no sir to the white man. On the weekend, they you know, they put on there, whatever. And, you know, there's no compromise. He made it clear there's no compromise. The Americans tried to bribe him. Um, President Eisenhoover and what have you tried, tried to bribe him. And he made it clear. He told the people of Congo, they want me to sign a deal to give away uh, our minerals and our Congo to, to, the, to the Americans because before it was the Belgium who colonized us um, on behalf of the British and the French um, but then uh, when Lumumba came to power the Americans thought they could do a deal with him to push out the Belgium and to allow the Americans to come in and dominate the Congo mm -hmm. he made it clear he told the people of Congo that our Congo is not for sale so we talk about why is it important to, 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 um, to remember Patricia Lumumba because today when we look for African leadership we don't really see much African leadership. You see the African president we have today. People say, "Oh, but why that president? So, why African president is so bad? Is so corrupt?" You know, people say that. You know, you hear that, don't you? Yeah. Why Af African leaders so corrupt? Da, 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 da. And we forget that we've had African leaders who are uh, 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 not corrupt. You know, you, 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 uh, 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 Marcus Garvey. We had Nkrumah. We've had obviously Lumumba. You know, and they died. They died with that message that Africa is not for sale. There's no compromise. So. And the reason why we have Barack Obama is because Patricia Lumumba was killed, assassinated, because the Black Panther will get, you know, were gunned down and, and eliminated, it's because, you know, Nkrumah and many others were overthrown and, and or killed. So because our leadership, our genuine African leadership was removed and killed or imprisoned or what have you, that paved the way for, you know, Obama to come in and to be this this, this leader that, that they impose on us and we're supposed to sort of, you know, say, oh yeah, that's, that's you know, he's not our leader. You know, he's, he's never. You know, he's not a leader. So right. he, he, because they gunned down Malcolm X and they gunned down, you know, uh, uh, um, Lumumba and, and 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 you know, um, Martin Luther King and the others. You know, that's why he's there. Mm -hmm. um, so if Lumumba was alive, there'd be no space for such people like Obama. There'd be no space, mm -hmm. you know, for these sellouts. Um, so that's why we remember um, um, Lumumba. Because if he was alive today, we wouldn't be suffering. We wouldn't have Ebola. We wouldn't have we wouldn't have Africans dying every day jumping That's on right. you know uh, uh, on boats and sinking. I think I read the other the other day uh, another boat load of Africans um, uh, died uh, you know trying to get get across from the Mediterranean Sea. You know if Lumumba was alive and Africa was was free, these things wouldn't happen. You know these things would not happen because why would we die getting to Europe when you know we'd be living good life in Africa? Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so that that's why we remember uh, Lumumba. And you and I probably wouldn't be here. Because we'll be in Africa, you know. <laughs> the Mumbo make sure that all African people, all African people, whether they're born in Africa, or outside, would have the right to come back to Africa, you know. And he had he set out all kinds of plans uh, before he was, you know, he was killed to make sure that these uh, a new Africa was was, was was in place, you know. And and the Americans, the French, understood that if Lumumba's plan was to be implemented, then it was it it, it would be death. It would be death to white power, you know. Um, and so they had to make sure that that they wouldn't even. They wouldn't even let us bury Lumumba. They had to get his body and, and, and dissolve in acid because they understood what he represented. He represented their death, you know. And you hear French leaders, European leaders, American leaders 
say it indirectly or directly, but it was Sarkozy who said in 2010, um, he said the future uh, of France is in Africa. Mm-hmm. You, you know, in other words, when when we have African leaders like Lumumba, when we have a mass movement that comes to power and begins to push out uh, 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 colonial interests and colonial forces and, and begins to build an Africa for the African people, then it, 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 it you know, it, it means that these guys, they can't come to Africa and eat and take our minerals and, and, and leave their life there, you know, and send their children, you know, uh, um, to enjoy themselves in Africa. It, it means they can't have, you know, the lifestyle that they want to have, you know. Uh, it means we're not going to be pumping uh, our money into their banks and keeping their bank system going, mm-hmm. you know. Um, Portugal, you know, Portugal um, is only kept, is kept going by Angola. And I don't know how many Africans know this. This is just yeah. one example, you know. When the Portuguese economy uh, was 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 really on its knees, yeah. it was the Angolan government that invested indirectly or directly a hundred million dollars into yeah. Angolan economy to keep it going. It was Angolan government that invited uh, a skilled white people from Portugal to come and work in Angola and pay them three times than Africans. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's just one example. And then of course you got all these West African countries, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and all their money. Uh, is is their foreign reserve money is in uh, French banks about 400 billion I think it's 400 billion francs I'm not sure if in dollars but either way it's about 400 billion um, uh, money worth of our of, of, of our foreign cu- currency you know but, but um, Father Macola, think, yeah quick, quick, quick question here in, in the sense of because you're, you're dropping some very very serious information at the moment and uh, one of the things that I, I tap into is that you said if 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 Patrice Lumumba had been alive a lot of the situations that were that you've uh, outlined uh, would not uh, have existed. Now, um, obviously, we're, we're around the anniversary of this particular assassination. Uh, and in saying that, we also have to uh, uh, honor the, the, the names of Joseph Okito and uh, Maurice Umpolo, who yeah, were absolutely. assassinated alongside uh, Baba absolutely. Patrice Lumumba. And they said that they would not yeah. let him go to his death by himself. Uh, but there is, a, yeah. there is a demonstration, a protest being planned tomorrow uh, outside uh, yeah. the uh, yeah. Belgian embassy. Um, why yeah. are we protesting outside of the embassy tomorrow, Brother Makola? Um, I don't know if people know this, you know, they talk about African leaders being crooks and, you know, they talk about making us look like, you know, we're, we're, we know, we, we've got the issues, we're, we're, we're the people with problems. When the Belgian left, it's not just that they made us suffer and they wiped out half our population when they, uh, when they, when they colonized us. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just that, you know, it wasn't just that they wiped out more people than, than Hitler did uh, during the, during the, during the Holocaust. Mm-hmm. Um, because, uh, well, I don't want to get distracted, but let's go back to the issue. The Belgian government took every penny, yeah. every penny when they when when they gave us flag independence. They didn't just say, "Okay, we'll come back for the back door," but they took every penny, and they made life difficult for Lumumba to govern the Congo. They uh, organized uh, what a fake civil war where they occupied the Congo in in South Congo, uh, Katanga, and created a breakaway republic, uh, which was basically uh, to mask an occupation of of Belgium and and other white power uh, forces and then they bombed uh, uh, our west uh, west uh, west uh, our west coast um our city matadi they were bombing uh, matadi talking about how they're there to defend white people in in Belgium, uh, in, in in the congo uh-huh. so basically the belgian government is responsible not just for the genocide of the african people uh during the colonial days but also for the theft and every wealth you see in belgium everything you see today not just uh, you know historically that our wealth uh, uh, built built um, built Belgium, but even today, everything you see today, Belgian museums, universities, you know, Belgian welfare, you know, Belgian government, uh, 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 countries known for having really the best health healthcare in the world, mm-hmm. the mineral resources, the diamond trade, which which um, which the Belgian government dominates along with the Israelis. You know, there's no there's no diamond in in in, 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 in um, there's no diamond in in um, you know in Belgium. In Belgium. It's all from in other words. They are looting us, they are killing us, and it hasn't stopped. And when we say reparation to the Congo, remember Lumumba, is we're saying that the struggle is not over. We're saying that we haven't forgotten. We're saying that Lumumba did not die in vain. And of course, tomorrow is going to be a symbolic event. But it's a symbolic event now. But tomorrow, when we're organized, it'll be for real. You know, it'll, it'll, it'll be for real. It'll be us, you know, going to Belgian banks and taking back our wealth, you know. Mm. For today, it's, it's symbolic, you know. Today is symbolic. 
but the struggle is real. You know, the struggle is real. And and um, so tomorrow we're calling on people to come and and be part of of uh, remembering Lumumba because we don't remember our heroes, our martyrs, by crying and say, oh, you know, isn't it? Oh, you know, isn't it sad they died? But we understand that they stood for something and they died for something and they understood what they were getting themselves into. So it wasn't a case where they died and it's like they didn't know what was coming. They knew what was coming and they made that choice that they would rather die for their people yeah. than live on their knees or sell out Africa. Yes, and we must honour them. Um, by by saying that the struggle continues because this is what they're afraid of, you know, not us wearing t-shirts of Lumumba or you know um, making someone dance about him, but it's us holding the people accountable, pointing finger at the institutions, the governments uh, of um, you know of, of Belgium and, and, and many of the companies, and, and the British were involved as well. And in fact, you know, it, it was it was a collaboration, you know, of white power. So it was the British, the French, the Americans. They were all trying to see who can kill him first. First, and we're all working together to try and you know eliminate him, you know. Um, and luckily, uh, so not luckily, a big, but unfortunately, um, they had help from other African uh, uh, sellout in the Congo, which is why they were able to get him. It wasn't that we were weak in the Congo? It wasn't that you know people um, uh, wanted Lumumba dead or that we were you know naive? It was the fact that there were people in Lumumba's own political party, sellouts, own political party. Who worked with the British, with the with the Americans to try and, and eliminate Lumumba, uh, um, which is you know which is what weakened Lumumba. So it wasn't a case that you know the people the people were behind Lumumba, but Lumumba couldn't talk to them um, as as he as he as he you know uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't able to get hold of the radio um, to mobilize the people in his defense and also in defense of the of the Congo's freedom. Um, they isolated him, they arrested him, you know, they, it was under house arrest, you know, um, and he snuck, snuck out you know at gunpoint, you know, if they saw him, they was going to kill him, and indeed they, they caught him. And killed him, you know. So he was trying to um, get to the radio while other African leaders uh, in the Congo, such as um, uh, um, Kazavubu, uh. Kazavubu, Chombe, they were able to pump out uh, anti Lumumba uh, propaganda. They call him; he was a tribalist. They call him all sorts of things. Mobutu was involved uh. in massac- massacring people and saying it was under the order of Lumumba. All this kind of stuff. So even today, there's a debate about. There's, there's a debate in Congo, you know. There's a debate amongst Congolese. Amongst us as Africans in the Congo, brother Makola, you know, how... brother Makola, we're, we're, we're gonna have to um, just briefly re- re- land you there, you know, brother Makola. But you're dropping the information. Um, I I do want to yeah, let sorry. brothers oh, and sisters. Yeah, sorry. No, no, no problem, brother Makola. It's, it's it's all good. But um, we want brothers and sisters to come out tomorrow, uh, the seventeenth of January, from twelve noon to one p.m. at the Belgian Embassy. Uh, that's seventy Grosvenor Crescent, Belgravia. Uh, London SW1 uh, X SW1 X 7 EE uh, and tomorrow is the 56th anniversary of the assassination mm. of Baba Patrice Lumumba uh, Joseph Okito mm. and Maurice Umpolo um, all that information can be found on our spec Kings and Queens for this show today uh, alkeboland.org and just go to the Africa Speaks with Alkeboland tab and you'll find the information for this particular event Brother Makola you are going to be with us on Friday, uh, the tw- the 20th, for yeah. our yeah. Rise of the Greats, Baba Patrice Lumumba tribute. So I'm sure brothers and sisters, if they want to hear more, they can come down either tomorrow or Rise of the Greats to get, you know, a bit more of the information that you have to give uh, on Patrice Lumumba. Is that correct? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm really, again, once again, this is just an example of the work that's been done in the community to really uh, re-educate us. Um, because, you know, it, it's funny because people always say, well, if all these bad things are happening to us, why aren't we doing anything about it? Mm-hmm. Sometimes we're not aware of these things that are happening. Sometimes we're not aware of, you know, of, 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 uh, we, we don't have the right analysis to look at something. We look at things from the point of view of our enemy, but when we look at things from the point of view of ourselves, we begin to realize, you know what? Yeah, we don't need to take this anymore. We need yes, to organize. Sir. And the kind of events are really good because they're not just about making us feel good making us enjoy ourselves, meet each other, you know, and network. But it's about making us realize that, you know, um, we've got to get organized, that the struggle still continues, you know. That's right, brother. Um, and, and, and so uh, I always say this. Um, when, I was in, when I was in Palestine, um, I met a group of, um, it was an educational group that go around showing young Palestinians, um, you know, the beauty and the heritage of, of Palestine. And I said to the organizer, why do you do this? You know, you, you're, you're under occupation. You know, why do you, why do you go around showing, showing young people the beauty of that country? He said, well, how can young people 
fight for their country, die for their country if they don't even appreciate it. And so these type of events really makes us appreciate who we are, appreciate our, you know, our Africa, because we got we, we got to fight for Africa. Lumumba understood the beauty and the potential of, of Congo. That's why he went out and struck out and said, right, you know, it's, it would do or die, you know. Um, so these events are really important. They're really really important because the poetry, you know, the the music, the beauty of our men and women, African brothers and sisters, is what that's Africa. You know, that is Africa, um, and it's worth living and dying for. Yes, you sir. Know? So appreciate you know that the, the, the events and I hope people will come and and, and be part of that um, honoring and and you know uh, remembering the Mumba. Thank you very much, brother Makola. I'm, I'm reminded, you know, that the, the last time I, f- I think I saw you in the physical uh, was at the weekend of love. So I want to say um, to, to send a shout out to your to your to your good wife and greetings to your entire family yeah. and your organisation as well. Yes, yeah. Tendai Mori, um, and brother leader will be joining um, the horror movement tomorrow. So. I'm um, looking forward to see you then, yeah? Tendai Mori. Thank you, Brother Makola. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Uhuru. Anyway. Okay, Kings and Queens, that's Brother Makola, representing the Uhuru movement and the Patrice Lumumba Coalition, uh, who will be hosting this protest, this demonstration outside the Belgium Embassy uh, tomorrow, the 17th of January, uh, Grosvenor uh, Crescent, Belgravia, uh, London, SW1X7EE. Brothers and sisters, as I said, you can get that information at alkebolan.org forward slash Africa Speaks with Alkebolan, uh, and we will. Uh, 